Uh, so thank you for coming, everyone, to the CME International Film Festival live discussion for the film My Wonderful Wonder. I am Marina Cavalcanti. I'm the logistics coordinator at the CME International Film Festival, and I'll be facilitating today's discussions. Uh, as people are settling in, and some people might still come along the way, they usually do, I'll just be uh, giving a few housekeeping notes. Today, uh, today's event is being recorded and by joining us, you're agreeing to having your participation recorded as well uh, as we will have this video posted on our website for future reference. Uh, but you have the option of um, um, turning off your camera if you wish. To make sure this event, event functions smoothly, however, your microphones will be muted as uh, you come in and throughout the discussion. But if you want to speak, have a comment or a question, please use your raise hand function on the bottom bar of the screen. For those who are unfamiliar with Zoom, you can find that uh, function on the participants tab, and then you have uh, raise hand. Uh, you can also write questions or comments uh, using the chat function in the bottom of the screen as well. Uh, we will have a Q&A uh, dedicated at the end, but you can have questions or comments throughout. It's all very welcome. Um, and you can use, again, the raise hand function or, and then I will call you out and you, you can unmute you. If you prefer not to speak, you can use the, the chat. Uh, and now I would like to, to introduce you to tonight's moderator, Dana Ogg. She's the Director of Undergraduate Studies, Film and Media Studies uh, at the University of Pittsburgh. Thank you, Dana. Hey, thank you. Um, I'm so happy that you all could be with us today. And first I'm, I'm going to um, introduce our wonderful guest tonight who is uh, coming to us at, from very late at night. So uh, we are so thankful to have Bettina Oberly with us tonight. And uh, Bettina grew up in Samoa and Maringen in Switzerland and lives as a writer director in Zurich. She graduated from the Zurich University of the Arts, she was followed by various assistantships in New York and Berlin. Her short and long feature films have been shown at festivals around the world and have shown in cinemas in various countries. Her well-recognized debut film in M. Nor Nordwin debuted um, 2004 at the San Sebastian International Film Festival and has been rewarded with several prizes. prizes. Her most successful film to date which I read about today and got so excited to watch in the near future. Um, it's my dream of what I want to do in after I retire, and that is Late Bloomers, um, which still remains among the top three Swiss feature films of all time. And I just can't believe I haven't heard of it before, and, uh, and now I'm so excited to see it. So um, anything you can tell me about that movie, I'm open to. Um, yeah. Uh, in 2018, she premiered her first French-speaking film, I, I Massacre French, Le Vent Tourne, at the Le Carno Film Festival. Uh, Bettina also makes music videos and short films. In 2013, she showed her first stage production at the Theatre Basel with uh, Anna Karenina, and she's also an opera director. I think that that, we'll talk about that a little bit, but I think that got COVID uh, affected. And then My Wonderful Wanda 2020 is her sixth feature film. So welcome, Bettina. We are so happy to have you here with us. So am I. Thank you. Uh, first off, I wanted to congratulate you on being the first time that a woman-directed film has opened the Zurich Film Festival. Um, yes. That's such a, a wonderful honor. How did it feel? Yeah, it felt great. And at the same time, it should be normal. So uh, it, it was uh, everybody, everybody asked me about this fact that it's uh, for the first time, but I, I think it should be normal. Yeah. Yeah. And I think um, uh, hopefully with, with, um, with major changes that have been happening lately, both um, all across international cinema, hopefully we'll see more and more um, opener yeah. films, but just more films by women in general. Yeah. yeah. Um, so uh, before we jump into to Wanda, I am just curious, I mean, I, your, your film was debuting right whenever uh, 
whenever everything started shut, shutting down for COVID. Um, and, um, and I know that that affected a number of festivals that you were um, slated to, to be um, in opening nights or in early uh, exhibition. Did you find any, were you able to find any silver linings to the shift to um, virtual festivals or the shift to having time to create more or pitch more uh, during this time period? Yeah, I found some silver linings in, in creating and inventing new stories. So I really had to, to be part of, uh, of a, a very general stop of, of uh, all the filmmaking community. So I was really um, taking advantage of it. Yeah. Yeah. Whenever, uh, whenever you were saying right at the right before we started, how you don't yeah. want to film anymore, I can say from from the pandemic, I don't want to teach at night anymore. <laughs> yes, I understand totally. Yeah, because but, everything ha has gotten so vir virtual and theoretical, and it's uh, it, it's a bummer. <laughs> <laughs> now, yeah. um, and uh, we can kind of start thinking about Wanda a bit because while I was watching it, I was actually really struck at how comfortable the film was for this long isolated period. The, the film um, really concentrates in one location and I, I keep on forgetting that there's a, a world outside of the lake house. Um, so is, is that sort of um, isolation or that closed society that we kind of feel in that house? Is that something that was important to you in, in this film in particular? It's really crazy because when we shot this film, we, we would never have, uh, you, you know, like a pandemic like that on the horizon, never ever. So we thought more like Switzerland to be an island, to be part of uh, the European Union in a very particular uh, special place. And then this pandemic was so far away and we could not have ever imagined to be a reality like that. So it, right now, in, when we think about it in a retrospective way, we would never ever have thought about that. Yeah, it, it makes for an interesting viewing experience though, because of how isolated it feels yeah. that, that a, lot of, um, a lot of people have, a lot of my time is my students, they feel that whenever they see now movies with a lot of people in them or party scenes or um, you know, tons of people together all at once, that they actually get some anxiety from it. And this film actually seemed to me to really capture um, a mood that, that probably many of us are feeling right now, which is that separateness, right? That the, the family very often we see people retreat to their rooms alone or that Wanda at times even seems to feel trapped in, in her, her, it seems that her basement room uh, within the house, mm -hmm. that, that there's, a, there's a feeling of, of isolation for uh, big parts of the movie, but then uh, goes in interesting ways towards family and community toward, towards the end. Yeah. Yeah, it's about an isolation and in the end it's more about getting back together again. One of the things that I really um, uh, was interested in, because uh, you co-wrote the movie as well as directed it. Yeah. Um, that very often whenever I see uh, films that have to do with very wealthy and then not wealthy put together, right? So class-based um, comedies or dramas, that very often there's a dread that I have. Um, there's a dread of violence, um, a, a dread of um, explo extreme exploitation, right? And we definitely have exploitation happening here. But um, there are moments in Wanda 
And I would say uh, whenever, for example, Sophie takes Wanda's passport mm -hmm. or whenever Sophie's husband says, I've figured out the solution and then we cut <laughs> away. In both of those moments, I, I felt uh, panic for potential harm to come to Wanda. Um, mm -hmm. that, that she uh, didn't have many rights in, in this situation. Is that something that you were deliberately building in to allow your expectations to go in those directions and then you would take us somewhere else? Exactly, yeah. And th that's what also the elliptic narrative of yes. filmmaking is all about. You know, yes. you, you tell a very dramatic story and then you cut and then three months later, you come back again. So, and all, all what happened in between is the imagination of the, of the audience. Yeah, I wasn't always sure how much time had passed. So then I was very, uh, my, ma my imagination was going in, in lots of different directions. Yeah. Um, I actually, I was very surprised whenever the first, um, the second act and then the third with, with uh, whenever those came up and then, um, and then we seemed to switch focus of characters. So if we were with Wanda initially, and then we're with Elsa, and then with Sophie, and of course we see them all, but those, um, what, that, that decision was really powerful for me because of course I assumed that we were gonna come in and be very much aligned with only Wanda the whole time. Yeah, yeah, that's interesting, yeah. So, uh, so why is it important for us to end up seeing uh, multiple perspectives and, and seeing from the side of the wealthier family as well? I think it would not be this interesting if we would stay with the, um, the perspective of someone coming into Switzerland. I think it's the benefit of a, of a um, multicultural movie is always to have different perspectives. So I think Switzerland is a country that, that has a, a, a lot of different cultures. And so we should also be part of this narrative. Yeah. Um, I, I very much was curious too about the concentration on women, which, um, I'm, I'm, I, I love feminist film. I teach gender all the time. Uh, and and the, there were a lot of moments when, whenever uh, the, the reconstituting families had moments of happiness whenever it seemed that they, it was more female dominated rather than male dominated. Is, is that something that, that, that I'm reading correctly? Well, I don't think that Switzerland is a very female dominated <laughs> country, even a bit on the contrary. But uh, I can fantasize about the future where maybe this would be the new normal. Yeah. Yeah, it's uh, like that moment whenever um, Joseph has the, the fantasy right yeah. before he passes and it's the beautiful. Exactly. The yeah. beautiful yeah. harmony, women dominated, which is not a negative thing. Yeah. No, not at all. Um, no. I, I saw it as incredibly positive. Like the, the, the moment right after Wanda gives birth and there's uh, sitting down to, to the, the, the table to drink a toast really ended yeah. up being such a moment of happiness and lightness and yeah i think a women dominated world would be a very good world yeah <laughs> which is how i ended up kind of feeling towards the end as well yeah which, yeah, yeah. Uh, that that great moment of decision that wanda has and that you don't tell us what she decides which i i thought no, was no. Really because I think uh, what it's all about, it's not uh, the answer, what she decides, but, but the, the choice she has 
all of a the, of the sudden she has a choice. She can choose, does she want to stay? Does she want to leave? But for the first time in her life, she has a choice. And that choice is whenever, whenever she chooses to also take her baby back and name her baby so that we see yes. That's true. standing up for herself and and trying to, to take as a control in a situation that she has has felt uh, less powerful through. Yes, totally. Yeah. One of uh, just as a, a small note, but I, I was very curious about um, at the end of the whenever you were shifting from the second act to the third act music became really important for yeah for, for about 15 minutes and i and i i, I wrote it down i was so um uh, struck by it and what why was it for for the fact that so much of the rest of the film had had music uh not as dominant that uh that shift right there what were what were you going for with that in uh, between the acts or in general? yeah it's right out right after uh, these boots were made for walking and then there's a couple of songs i think it's uh, all in all it's also a story about uh, women getting liberated and at the same time getting closer together so i think the the song these mood these boots are made for walking that's a very a metaphoric song about the whole subject and uh, there is this daughter uh, daughter mother moment yes yeah so we took everything i i really think there was uh, this song right at the beginning and the whole score and soundtrack was built around that these boots are made these boots are made for walking yeah, which, that, uh, which could be a motive for each of the characters. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I was. I of course I was thinking about it in relationship to um, Sophie and Elsa since they were directly in the scene at that moment. But yeah, and that becomes a moment where Sophie becomes much more of a relatable yeah. and kind character it's because um, she's letting go. Yes. Yeah. She's letting and letting go, go of, of her frustration of not of not yeah. being able to to yeah. get pregnant. Yes. Yeah. Uh, and I was uh, I was surprised, but um, interested in um, the the end. Whenever Wanda takes the the child back, that uh, Sophie could have easily gone in a much different direction, but she dives into the water free like spreads the ashes and then the next whenever we keep seeing her she she's kind and she's kind to Wanda and uh this connection is uh seems that perhaps that the, the bonds between women are getting past the bonds of class and nation at that point yeah. that's what I think I'm maybe I'm naive and too positive, but that's actually really honestly what I think. Yeah. Yeah, I, I think so often in media we see women characters pitted against one another, and yeah. um, and uh, always forced to 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 uh, compete. So to actually see them come together and reformulate uh, family and kindness is. Yeah. Is very nice to see it is uh, which also makes me excited for late bloomers because that is oh. <laughs> women coming together. very interesting to be in a competition I don't think it's uh, we don't we are not in a gold medal war on a, or in an Olympic you know competition where there's only one first place I don't I really don't see it like that there's much there's a couple of first places, so um, yeah, absolutely. And once, once, um, once I understood that 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 my expectations of of uh, kind of the negativity were about me, my internalization rather than the film moments that that I 
maybe had, had been suspicious of earlier, like Elsa uh, giving Wanda the dress. What a, what a beautiful dress. Yes. Uh, <laughs> become uh, much, much, much more kind moments. And yeah. we actually see throughout the film that, that, that um, Elsa was kind the whole time. Uh, and yeah. yeah, it's very, very, very nice to see. Um, I am, uh, so a lot of the actors are theater actors and yeah. this was filmed in, uh, in a non-typical way from what especially we expect with Hollywood film. This was done um, in chronological order? Yeah, quite, quite of a chronological order. Yeah, because we had three seasons, so we could uh, really, uh, yeah, we could really pack it into um, winter or spring or summer, and then we could follow in, uh, in a chronological way. Yeah. And with the with uh with the theater actors and being on location for so long together is did that play a role in kind of deepening the relationships that we could feel between the yeah, I, I think it helped a lot. Yeah, yeah, because we were we were living in this house for quite a long time and I was also choosing my actors really from from this uh, stage per perspective. So I, I really wanted to work with theater actresses. Yeah. Yeah, it, it honestly, um, I, I don't know how many people are familiar with it, the, the, um, the level of intimacy and connection between the actors reminded me of something like um, Festin or The Celebration, which, uh, which uh, an early dogma film for, that also was, was all set at one house together and then everybody had been together for yeah. And there was a, a real sense of, um, of depth of feeling. Mm -hmm. that, we were able in that film and this film to to discover between the characters. I'm totally attracted to this idea. Yeah, I I this is was what I'm interested in the most, working with the actress, act, mm -hmm. actors and actresses, and so I I would really uh, love to to you know go into a house and and live with them and cook with them and work with them <laughs> and in the morning we develop a scene and in the afternoon we shoot it and you know I'm coming really right uh, out of this hippie um, creative moment so uh, this would be my really most perfect idea of shooting a movie. Um, I'm, I'm would say that uh, Marina, if we start having questions that, that are coming up. Um, and one of the things that I know that's gonna come up immediately, and so I'll ask it first, is the cow. The cow. The cow. But what, what is the question? <laughs> oh, the cow, it just, it seems almost um, a, an otherworldly sort of, of being that's moving, um, you know, uh, across the spaces of the um, of the the film, and whenever the the cow comes back to the lake house, uh, yeah. <laughs> is that yeah. the national misunderstanding of one another, which is how it plays out in that moment? I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. Now uh, the movie has been traveling around the world like really around the world and I <laughs> now I'm stuck with the idea that um, a cow is only happening in Switzerland. <laughs> I don't know the the cow was also a, a narrative idea of I mean in some uh, very um, creative way Wanda is also a cow. Yes. You know, she's, a milk cow. She's a cow to this uh, very rich uh, Swiss family. She's a cow to her baby. She produces milk. You know, she's like she's treated like a cow. So for us, it was like 
totally logical that there has to appear a real cow in the garden of this very privileged Swiss uh, family. <laughs> so, so uh, yeah, I know, but the, the cow is uh, very much a subject wherever I go, there is a big question about the cow. Yeah. Yeah, it's and I, I I was I was feeling like Wanda and the cow were very that yeah. she was being treated like the cow as well. You know, there's um the like there's sayings in in English about right. I, I'm not sure if the, if there's uh in for other languages like about. Oh, but there's a big metaphor the about the cow, I and mean, you know the cow is giving milk. The cow yes. is worse. The cow that the, there's a lot of sense making in a cow yeah. so yeah it's, it's, the cow is very useful yes as, as there is a mother and a woman yeah yes absolutely yeah any questions marina uh yeah um i think yolanta did you send a question uh do you like would you like to you're muted uh, yes, Bettina. Uh, hi, I would like to ask hi. you. Uh, hi, I would like to ask you uh, when and why that topic of uh, Poles, Polish women, but also men uh, traveling to the West and taking very low-paid jobs, even if they are educated uh, people. Why that topic um, interested you? Yeah, I um, I was reading about this uh, a lot in the newspapers in Switzerland, that there are more and more people coming from the East to our country to be uh, um, a part of the social system, of the social system in a way that they are taking care a lot of the elderly or the you know uh, people vulnerable people in Switzerland so I was reading a lot about this and then I was starting to think I should or could make a movie about it okay and the second question uh, did you base it on uh, one the character on uh, one story in particular, or did you spend a lot of time on the research? I, I did spend a lot of time on the research. I did spend a lot of time with women, with uh, a, a lot of women during eight or 10 or 12 months to create a very believable character of Wanda. So there's a lot of research in this one particular character. Okay. We have more questions. I'm gonna read it here in the chat. Um, I'm sorry if I don't say your name correctly. I think Megan was, I was wondering if Bettina considers this film a reaction against social resistance to less traditional family types. For example, single parent households, same sex parents, uh, etc. And what this film says about what a family should look like or act like. Yeah, family can be uh, constructed by very different uh, parts. You know, the perfect family, we always think about father, mother, uh, son first, and then maybe some daughters, but you know, uh, a very tight uh, genetic connections but now in 2021 I think a family can be nurtured by a very uh, interesting other system. That's great. Jenna, did you have anything on that, on that topic? Um, I One of the things that I would uh, immediately thought of whenever you said that is um, Joseph seemed like he didn't connect as well with um sorry i always have everyone's names in front of me with Peggy. um but yeah. and he was revitalized whenever the the wanda's yeah. child i mean of course truly be began to walk again began uh was able his body actually kind of um he, he became yeah. 
Verve. What a reborn. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Very much. And, and yeah. uh, he, he performed that so well too. Yeah. Um, yeah. That would seem to be that moment of that if only the traditional family was accepted, then we have this kind of the, the non-traditional family, which I would also say, I love how the, um, the film has zero judgment for Wanda for um, taking money um, for, for having sex, uh, that, that sex work is not um, condemned in this movie in any way. Uh, that, and, and, and she, she just treats it as a job. And uh, th that, that scene was, was uh, great. I think that, thank you. I think that um, it's very important to picture her as someone who is really not a victim. And um, when you accept that, you can go really far because she's not a victim and she will never be. Yeah, and she's, she, whenever she talks to her father about, um, about what she ha she's doing to, to, to keep the whole family afloat, like we end up seeing that she's not a victim. She's actually, she's the, she's the driving force of the family at yeah. this point. Yeah. Keeping them, keeping them uh, uh, financially yeah. solved. Yeah. Yes. So I mean, that for us, for me and Dr. Nieszka, it, it was really important to tell that she's not a victim. She's in charge of the situation always. Uh, we have more questions. I think I have uh, Oscar's hand raised and I'm going to go back to some questions in the chat. Um, Oscar? You're muted. Unmute yourself. Yeah. Oscar. Uh, can you can you hear me? Oscar. You're muted. You are <laughs> muted. C can you unmute him? No, only him. I can ask you, but I don't think. Oscar. Can you see can you see the mute button on the bottom of the screen? On the mic microphone. Uh, yes. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Sorry, that bu that button didn't work for me. Only. Don't no worry. Don't no worry. That happens. <laughs> Thank okay. you. We said a lot about the theatricality of this film, and I have to say that it struck me very much like uh, it could have been a modern remake of an 18th century classical French comedy by Moliere that doesn't exist. That was never written, but nevertheless, it's very much in that mold. And I wondered if that was on purpose. Among other things, it has some of the same kind of stock characters, like the young scion of the family who turns out to be yeah, kind of a dud or a dunce, and the servant girl who turns out to be cleverer than her masters and ends up by more or less wrapping, wrapping them around her uh, fingers. And for me, I wanted to say the only justification for the cow, which I really hated. Okay, I like this film a lot, and I think I played uh, a, a certain role in having this film selected for the festival. Uh, but I really disliked the cow. I thought it was completely unnecessary and uh, just was a little bit over the top, but I could easily see it in a stage version of this by having an actual live cow, you know, walk across the stage. That would be a possible justification. But I, I wonder if you might even consider turning this in to a stage play because it's very stagey. And, and I think it would make a very good stage yeah. play. Yeah, yeah, thank you. Um, I, 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 all the rights to make a stage play, they, they stayed with us. So we are <laughs> the two authors, Cookie Tisha and me, we, uh, we kept the stage rights and uh, we are thinking about turning it into a stage play. Yeah. Mm. Oh, that's inter interesting. I, I, I also do uh, theater directing and I, I also do opera. So I'm, uh, I'm constantly thinking about uh, changing film scripts into stage plays. Yes. Yeah. Thank yeah. you. That's nice to hear. Thank you. Yeah. Awesome. Um, I have one question for, for, from Seema on chat. Uh, she asks, uh, 
One thing I was wondering was how much did the choice to have Wanda live in the same house instead of in a separate home in the property play into the progression of Wanda's relationship with the family? Sorry, I, did, I, I, I didn't get the question. Oh, sorry, can you hear me? Yes. So Sima asked, one thing I was wondering was how much did the choice to have Wanda live in the same house instead yeah. of in a separate home on the property play into the progression of Wanda's relationship with the family? Uh, this is very common that um, these caretakers are uh, coming, getting into the family and then becoming part of the family. So this is uh, the whole part of it, that they are not um, some people, you know, nurses living outside. I think the whole system is based on, they come here and they live with you 24 seven. Yeah, I just have a, a comment, my, my comment based on that. Uh, that's also very, I'm from Brazil and that's also very common. Uh, it used to be more common, but it's, it still is. And it's an interesting relationship because the caretaker, whatever it is, uh, ends up, you know, sometimes it depends, um, but it ends up becoming more of a parent or more of a part of the family than the actual, you know, uh, how, uh, heads of the household. And that's an interesting yeah. dynamic uh, to explore. Yeah. Totally, yeah. Um, Gus uh, asked, um, I'm, begin I'm a beginning screenwriter. What writing lessons did you learn from this screenplay? I think I learned a lot about um, entertainment and I found a, a great pleasure in entertaining the audience which is a bit weird um, in this subject. But at the same time, I think it's very important to involve and, um, and make the audience part of the story. So I, 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 I really, in, uh, together with my co-author, Kuchi, Kuki Tisha, I, I <laughs> I, um, I really de rediscovered the, the pleasure of entertaining an audience in a, in a smart and intelligent way. You've worked in a number of different genres, uh, types of films uh, across your films. Uh, and then of course, with the play and your, your potential next project, which is the kingdom. Uh, yeah. the, um, and that's a, that, that'll be a very different genre, correct? Yeah. Yes, yeah. Yeah, I, I, I always try to explore myself in different genres and um, different types of film. Yeah, I, I love to make uh, cinema, but I also love to make uh, TV and television. Yeah. Oh, I, I, yeah, I, I teach television, so I, I'm always, yeah. <laughs> yeah. But you know, it always sounds a bit like a minor uh, value, but I don't think television is a minor value anymore. I think it's even more, it's, it has developed to be even more. Yeah, yeah the, the storytelling that, that yes, continues exactly. on and uh, allows yeah. for... Uh, exactly. A lot and of the audience the characters. Not, the audience is not stupid, you know. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, and and just as just as um, in this film, we saw the way that that kind of having a relationship with the audience, so that we could we our minds could go in different ways, and then you could redirect us. It's yeah. a very fruitful sort and respectful. Uh, relationship between you and the audience that uh, it's a, a playfulness and actually I think where a lot of the the comedic tone can emerge in in this film um, mm -hmm. so thinking of genre um, I've seen that you've talked uh, in other places and uh, about 
your decision to not have this be a, a serious social drama. And, mm -hmm. um, and so I could, obviously this could very easily have gone that direction or towards the violent satire direction, but you chose to take the material and do more of the, the that sort of subtle comedy of manners, Moliere sort of uh, that, that we've already talked about here. Um, do you particularly enjoy taking um, a, a story and doing it in a slightly different genre than people expect? Yeah, I'm taking a lot of joy out of it. Yeah, because um, you can get lost so quickly in a genre way of storytelling. So I, I, I'm really always searching for a different angle. And uh, one that we could have told a very sad and depressing story of, you know, power and dependence and everything. And, and I was really, or we and my co-author and me, we were really interested in, in telling a story in a different way. Also about what would we put to be um, a very uh, important event that it's it's not in the end a, a very <laughs> disturbing and sad story. So what could we tell to to put a very uh, funny story about the win-win situation? <laughs> yeah, and and uh, very often whenever we see social dramas, there's a a tendency to to have to find an answer or to uh, or solve moral ills. Yeah. 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 Um, and instead here, by by taking the comedic approach allows for that imagination of a different future. Um, yeah, I hope so. Yeah, I hope so. We were really interested in, in the question, what has to happen that there is not a very clear class difference? And, and what should happen that we can also make fun of, you know, what, uh, what, what, what can we, what, how can we tell a story about class differences in a, in a also, you know, not funny way, but ironic way. Yeah. I, I have one, one more question. I don't know, Dana, if you have anything on, the, on this. Uh, but I have one more question on the cow oh, from Mike. Uh, the, he asked, what was the point of having Joseph actually milk the cow? Uh, there seems little reason that he even knows how to milk a cow. Um, Joseph comes from a different background than his wife. And um, when we show the first scene of um, first sex scene with Wanda, there is different pictures of the family. And then there is one of Joseph being a boy with a cow. So Joseph comes from a really from a farmer background. So now he is he lives with this uh, very rich family and wealthy wife and but still his roots are are really um, coming from a farmer's life so he knows how to milk a cow at the end of his life he knows how to milk a cow um just a comment from sue balser uh she said she loved the film and she it's one of her favorites so far this year um and um, Yolanta has one more question. <clears throat> yes, Latina, I would like to ask you about the sense of humor. Uh, I was actually smiling or laughing through um, most of the uh, film. Uh, and um, I was thinking uh, how much of the uh, Polish sense of humor by, uh, you know, making the Polish family um, that it's coming um, really uh, showed like very a comical way. And my question is, wasn't written in the script or how much the Polish actors brought uh, that humor into the film, especially uh, Pazura and... Uh, Agnieszka. Agnieszka. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 
I think the Polish humor is always um, um, there's always a very me melancholic side. I don't think there is a Polish humor of you know just laughing and making fun of people. I think when there is a Polish humor, it's always making fun about situations, mm -hmm. but never exploding characters. So I felt very safe in this sense of humor because I think Swiss humor is quite the same way. You know, we don't make fun of people or, or um, creatures. We, if we get into situations, we can take the most of humor out of it. Mm -hmm. And so I think that's when, when we get connected to the, to the Polish people or actors. Mm -hmm. I didn't have in mind uh, making fun of people. I was thinking even about the scene when the bus is coming to the station three times and it's Łódź yeah. Warszawa Gdańsk and yeah. you see the Polish people are coming out of the bus or singing the song Czarne Oczy Masz. For me, it's like very um, funny. Yeah, I know, I know. But I, th I think um, this, uh, this three times surviving is also constructing the three act structure of the movie. Right. So it's always the same women coming from Poland to Switzerland. And I really think they are making the best out of it. But it's always surrounded by a certain kind of melancholy. Yeah. I was really struck in, with the melancholy, the moment whenever uh, Wanda sneaks the, the, um, the computer conversation with her, with her kids and then uh, gets, gets busted uh, by, for it. And then um, kind of that moment of humiliation of um, having to, the, the bucket of water gets, gets kicked over mm -hmm. and he's stopping up the water. I thought that that, that was, you know, for, the various humorous moments that there's a deep sadness that that is in yeah. there in yeah, terms sure. of her yeah. her distance from her from her yeah. children. Yeah, that's what I think. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, one thing that I'm that I am uh, curious about, and I and again we thank you so much for for spending spending us time with us with it being so late <laughs> time. I know that my brain starts kind of uh, get, getting a little uh, disconnected the later it gets. Um, but you work um, in a lot of different languages uh, yeah. in films and. Do you do you um, choose the projects based on like that that certain humor or certain stories fit differently or or how how does I mean I know that that America is very like we are so colloquial in terms of we own that with uh, English language but it seems to me that that your your films are really moving between languages a, a lot yeah but I think that's very normal in Europe. You know, I, I grew up uh, in, in Switzerland and at, at the same time in Samoa, where I was uh, speaking English. And then uh, I, I'm very, very uh, familiar with French because I have two sons with a, a French citizen. So they speak French and we speak French. So, you know, I, I, I'm used to change languages uh, all the time yeah but i think that's a very european thing because i'm not the only one who changes <laughs> the language because we all change in between german french italian spanish portuguese you know yeah. it's uh, it's our daily, uh, our daily business yeah yeah, and uh, if anyone has any more questions or comments, we still have a few minutes if you, uh, the chat is open or you can raise your hand uh, if you have anything. So, um, I don't know, so yeah, sorry, go ahead. Oh, yeah, <laughs> Bettina, uh, I know that, so it, it's your, the opera that was, um, that was postponed or canceled because of COVID, is yeah. that, 
is that something that you expect that you're going to be able to um, return to doing or? or yeah, or I very much hope so. Yeah, it's a it's a very classic Tchaikovsky opera. But if it, I, I made a very uh, physical mise en scène, so uh, we cannot, we will never ever can do it with a mask or distance or so. It's about love, it's about sex, it's about physical, you know, longing, and so we cannot do it in an abstract uh, way. So um, I think we just have to wait until <laughs> uh, everything is getting normal in a physical way. Yeah, but it's, you know, it's stored in containers and uh, yeah, so it's, uh, it's on hold, yeah. Um, and, and, uh, and this, Wanda, was after you did the, the stage play for Anna Karenina? Yes, yeah, it was after. Yeah, because I, and, and I was wondering if, if that, that kind of theatrical um, feel to the 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 um, the staging and the performances, I wonder if if uh, and hope that maybe we'll get sort of an operatic uh, influence in a future film. Yeah, I I, I was very uh, impressed by this opera experience. So I I think and I hope that it will also be part of my next uh, movie stuff. Yeah. <laughs> Do you, and uh, do you think that the kingdom is going to be your next project? And I think kingdom. I hope kingdom is going to be one of our next projects. It's a, it's a, it's a very uh, interesting and a big project with Emily Beecham, which who, big, big, uh, big uh, star in in the United Kingdoms. So I hope this win will be one of our next projects. And then I have another few of, uh, yeah, cinema projects and I have some movie projects. So I have a lot of projects. <laughs> <laughs> That's always the, the best way to, to, to yeah. Yeah. have everything up in the air at the same yeah, yeah. time. Yeah. But, the, but I, I have to apologize a bit because I have to, I had, op I had to operate my foot. If you see, yeah, yeah, I have a, yeah. So I'm very sorry. I had to do it today. I had to, uh, I, yeah. So I'm a bit under uh, influence of uh, painkillers and um, yeah. You, I, I, you have yeah. done wonderfully <laughs> under the influence of painkillers. Yeah, so I had, I, I, yeah, I had an operation today. So I think, uh, but you know, my foot never stops me of uh, making movies. So <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, you have, it's the, the pain that the movies have to be made, pain or yeah, no. But the pain is bad right now. So yeah, I'm so I, sorry. It's okay. <laughs> I'm sorry about that, but it it didn't even seem like it. It's just like you, you, you handle it really well. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. I just want to. Yeah. Sorry. Do you have any? I just want to check uh, if anyone has any more uh, final questions or comments. Um, and you can put it in the chat or raise your hand. Uh, Bettina, if you have any parting like comments or anything like that. Oh. <laughs> or Dana? Just, uh, I'm just uh, so happy that we were able to talk to you and, <laughs> and, uh, and uh, that the film, well, of course, you know, that, that for, uh, I bet a lot of the audience uh, that doesn't speak like Polish, like we miss some, some of the jokes that Yolanda yeah. got, but that, um, that the, uh, that, this film is able to to speak to a number of audiences all over the world in in uh, in different ways and um, and I think that uh, that that that's a, an amazing accomplishment and um, so I, <laughs> I'm like I now I just want you to go to bed. <laughs> yeah, maybe it's not the baddest idea. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah.
Everyone is thanking you in the chat, Bettina and Dana. Um, Thank you. Said this was a great film with a really interesting take on class relations and privilege. Um, and I want to thank you as well. And thank you, ever, thank, thank everyone you, for you. joining us for the event and Dana for moderating. It was really great. Uh, thank you, Bettina, for being here, even with your surgery. You. That was really, it's, we really appreciate it. Um, we want to thank also our supporters like FEM, uh, CMU Student Organization, the Department of Slavic Languages and Literatures at the University of Pittsburgh, Humanities College Program, CMU uh, Graduate Studio, Student Assembly, and District College Computing Services. Um, we have come to the end uh, of our last uh, film of this season, which is uh, an unusual season. We really appreciate everyone like, following yeah. us throughout this and just um, adjusting with us. <laughs> um, and we look forward to seeing you in other events. Uh, we want to say, like, the, uh, we're going to send a survey in the following days, in the coming days, uh, just regarding tonight's discussion and event. Uh, will help you improve, it will help us improve uh, events in the future. And the film uh, is available, My Wonderful Wanda is available for streaming until today. So if you want to watch it again, if you want, haven't watched it, you have until the end of today. Uh, so yeah, thank you everyone for coming. This has been really great. Thank yeah. you very much. Thank and you. I would thank have loved to be there in, in, in person. Yeah, yeah, I would love to <laughs> be able to to do that, to do this in person, yeah. <laughs> in the future, Bye. yes. Bye.